Before I start the show, congratulations to Brad Hepner and Jack McDougal for scoring the cover of this month's Snowboard Canada. I don't know who gets more excited for a cover shot, the rider or the photographer. Hepner revealed the cover to Jack at a party up in Squamish in attendance were fellow cover boys, Cale Stevens and Chris Brown, and Hepner spent over $600 in tequila shots, which could have actually been more than he made for the shot. A lot more. <laughs> PD is having a vintage snowboard show and shine February 11th at Skull Skates in Qualicum. You can bring your prized pre-2000 vintage snowboard over to Qualicum Beach and partake in what's sure to be a fucking rad time. That's Saturday, February 11th. All right, on to the show. The F and Rad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Vans. Season 8 of F and Rad is sponsored by Wired Snowboards and on Optics, the Boardroom Snowboard Shop, Find an Epic Agent Worldwide Real Estate, and Tribute Board Shop in Nelson, BC. The Boardroom Snowboard Shop is Vancouver's premier snowboard shop with the best selection of the best snowboards and all the accessories you can imagine at the guaranteed best price. The Boardroom's been in business for more than 30 years and aims to provide the best service and its shows. Knowledgeable staff passing on what they know to you in order to provide you the best possible product for your personal performance needs. Visit the Boardroom on West 4th in Vancouver or Lonsdale in North Van or go to boardroomshop.com and browse thousands of snowboard products from the comfort of your own home. Support also comes from Dekine, Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Pro Standard GoPro Accessories, and Volcom Outerwear. Hey, you can also watch the show on YouTube. It's the exact same show, but you get to see the guest, you get to see me. All right. Go subscribe. Thank you. Awesome. Special thanks this episode to Beneath Apparel, This Place is Awesome Vacation Rentals in Whistler, and Tomahawk Indigenous Products. Dave Sioni is one of the pro snowboarders from the awesome 90s era of booming growth, neon water-resistant outerwear, boards you screwed your bindings in with wood screws, backflips, and kickers. Dave's always been one of my favorites. His commentary in Snowboarders in Exile is burned into my brain. I wanted a Luke Lamar trick stick so bad just because of him, and he's one of the OG pros I've always wanted to have on the show since the beginning. So you could imagine how stoked I was to receive his contact info from none other than Jason Brown. Thanks, Jason. After a short flight, a short drive, I found my way to Dave Sioni's acreage in California, it's a true honor to have him on the show. Here's the one and only Dave Sioni. Yeah, I grew up here on the 10 acres, but there wasn't a house here. Yeah. No, so there was just a, a trailer. And then I had to share a porch, <laughs> a covered porch with my brother. And then I think I was like 15, and I was like, I'm getting my own fucking place. I moved out to the cab over camper. <laughs> oh, fucking, that's it. <laughs> and it sick. was cold. I had a kerosene heater, and I would put kerosene in it and I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up in the middle of the night and it was out of kerosene and it was just smelled so bad I'd wake up with a headache and then I had to wow. get up and I'd be like, oh, this is bad. This is before there was anything dangerous in the world. Right. <laughs> before the warnings. And so I'd get up and then I'd like, had to walk a, fo- a mile down the dirt road to that to the highway. You, you, you yeah. It's, a, it's exactly one mile. And the best part is when I... I'd catch a bus for another like hour and a half or hour when I went to the elementary school and then um, on the way back and get off the bus and then I'd have to uh, walk back down to the dirt road but right on the corner there where it turns where the crossroad is um, occasionally there would be a, a buffalo there <laughs> and his name was Torque and I'd be like god damn it Torque is out because that means he got out and like to heat because they walk over fences it's like okay Torque is out I was like I got to uh, I got to go around, so I'd cut through the manzanita, and <laughs> cut the corner, and I tell my kids that, and they're like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> You're blowing my mind. Like, <laughs> why the trailers? Like, what was the what? What did your dad and mom do that that they were they 
aspiring to build the house or were they just bohemian and they're like Fuck, we live in <laughs> it's what they didn't do is make a lot of money and so right. we we grew up with no money but you know we went fishing all the time we went camping and we were a pretty happy family we we're pretty tight and and uh and it was good and the, the plan was like this property became available um i don't remember how old i was and they were like we're getting it and my 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 dad he stepdad he was like He's like, we're buying this property. And my mom was like, how? We have no money. He's like, I don't know, but we're going to get it. And they got it somehow. That's rad. And it was amazing property. It's like 10 acres up on the hill. It's the, unbelievable. The lake. Did you see it in the daytime? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I sent the shot to my kids and my wife. I'm like, look at this place. Yeah. I peeked in the bathroom there where the, with the tub with the view. I'm like, Pfft. yeah. Just be sitting in there all the time. Yeah. Well, you got to put hot water back in and get cold. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, it, it's just in this incredible spot. And uh, 10 acres, did you say? Yeah. So what are your plans with it? Because this is, re this is recent well, that well, you've moved back here. Yeah, right? I moved back here um, about a year ago. And uh, my mom passed away last year at this time. And uh, my brother and I were trying to figure out what to do. And I, I spent about three days here. And I was like, oh, no, I'm, we're not selling it. Like, this is, this is where we grew up. Like, I'm, I'm moving back. This is like the timing of everything where my life was. I'm like... We're coming back because there's a lifetime of work here. Yes. Between the trees and like, yes. the property, which 10 acres is not a lot, but there's it's there's a lot of trees and grass and drainage and whatnot. And there's a, a, a shop that we're in now that was here as, as well. So this I'm just building this up so I have a place to work and, and build. Yeah. And so it was just, but, and, you know, it's quiet. You know, all the neighbors, like, I'm in the safest spot, like retired sheriff deputy, retired <laughs> Oakland cop from the 70s. The actual wow. county sheriff lives just down there. There's a, a current CHP officer over there. Like They have to get through all those guys to get to the end of the road. <laughs> and if they can make it through that, then they deserve it. But like, there, there's a lot of eyes on this, on just looking out for each other here. And so you got the neighbor safe. up the hill, too. That place just looks insane. Yeah, over here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that you share the kind of... It's almost like a cul-de-sac, but that's just not the right word for where you're at. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's the end of the road. It's gated and it's a ball de sac. A ball. <laughs> <laughs> Another made-up word. There you go. Recreational wordsmith. So, what's the first? Like, when you're living out here, how do you get a skateboard? Where does the skateboard come from? Well, in high school, I think yeah, I think I was in high school. That's when uh, I was like, okay, okay. Here's here's how it started. I remember I was like. I think we went down to Berkeley and I was like starting to listen to that. Like, I think the sex pistols were like, yeah, yeah, we're punk rock. We're going punk rock. Yeah. And then it was like the circle jerks. And it was like, it was like, okay. And black flag. And it was like skating. And it was like, Oh, here's a culture. It's just like, I, I don't know how I got involved. I mean, I live out in the middle. I live in redneck, redneckistan. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how I got immersed in the whole, like, I don't want to be a redneck. I just want to be a, I don't, the skater. I just wanted to skate. And so, um, I built a vert. I, I actually I built a, a vert ramp, but it was <laughs> it was four feet tall. Oh my god! And it went to vert, and I just learned on it, and I, I learned how to drop in. And it happened so fast, so I was like, okay, I want to build a bigger ramp. And so at that time was I think it was when like Bones Brigade came out, and I had it on VHS, and we just watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Bones Brigade, you know, that was an amazing. That that's where I got my skateboarding source from. So I was like, I'm gonna build a, a big vert ramp. It's like, why not? <laughs> yeah, you got the space. There's no rules. Yeah, we got the space. And my mom's like, yeah, go ahead. Like, not thinking I was going to be able to pull it off and get the wood <laughs> together. But a lot of people volunteered their wood to us, which was... From the surrounding area? From the surrounding areas <laughs> at night. And it was it was very nice of them. And, you know, I feel like I need to give back to the community for that one. But, sure, sure. Um, it ended up, it was like kind of a safe place because we'd be here at night and we'd be skating. And... Um, you have lights on it? What'd you do? I won't tell you how we got the lights, but yeah, we eventually got some lights on the ramp. And because it gets hot here, it gets like 110, 115. Okay. Um, yeah, because you're exposed. This is, uh, th this reminds me of the desert in Mexico, like down in Cabo. My wife and I all sometimes get a little casita near the near the beach. Like the smells and the and the like. I saw a tumbleweed today. You did. I saw a fucking tumbleweed. It was like pouring rain. Tumbleweed blows across the highway. I was like, "Holy shit!" What does a casita smell like? Well, the casita—it <laughs> depends on what time of the day. Um, 
it was just the like desert sage or something. There's there's a, a smell when you're walking through like the brush at dusk that it's just like un mistakeable it's well there, incredible. there there is a skeet uh, or something i don't know there is a tar weed here mm-hmm. and it's really greasy and it comes out in the late summer and it smells it's very uh, pungent yeah and i remember like i left i spent a whole summer like well not a whole summer like a month down in pismo beach where my real dad was moved down there so i was like oh beach surf i'm yeah. gonna learn how to surf everything um but when i came back that smell i was like ah oh, smells like home and, and in the fall I mean, it's everywhere and it smells, and that—that's what—that's what. That's what um, when I smell that, I just feel like like th- this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, dude, this place is super, super rad. I was just blown away coming up the hill, and I'm like, "Fuck, there's citrus trees!" Like, it's just—it's a whole foreign world. I live in a rainforest where it just rains all the time. It was really sunny all summer, actually, really nice. But it's uh, this is more desert-like, right? Like well, it's it's rolling foothills. This is like rolling you know, foothills. because the San Joaquin Valley is down below, and and just like just a few miles away is kind of the start of like the rolling foothills, and then you go up about another uh, in altitude, another maybe up to like fifteen hundred feet, and then it starts to get into pine trees. So it yeah. goes from oak trees to brush to to uh, to oak trees to brush to to the pines those oaks are scary man i saw some really big ones that like poltergeist or something they're like yeah like scary trees they, they've got a lot of character yeah when i grew up i remember i was like i never into oaks but i don't know what happened and just, i'm so the same way it's like i'm not gonna say i talk to the trees or anything like sure. that but the trees are they're pretty amazing and so i try to i i've been trying to like i'm not trying to cut them all down i'm just trying to like you know, kind of spread them apart because they grow in clusters sometimes and you got to thin all that out so you can, yeah. um, and then cl- all the big ones and then the medium sized ones, you got to clean up all the, cut off all the, the ladder fuels to, yeah. for fire prevention. But here, because it's, it's mostly uh, grass. So if you, if you keep the grass cut and you keep the trees um, manicured, I live in a stucco house with concrete decks and a metal roof. So it's like, yeah. if there's a fire that rips through here, I'm just going to be out there with a hose. <laughs> You know, <laughs> <laughs> did the fires get close to here? Uh, yeah, I mean, this summer, this summer was actually pretty good, but yeah, you can see them out there. I mean, you can see it because we're on a hill. You have a, a, a lookout, and what's nice is uh, now they have those the Chinooks that come in and just like because there's plenty of lakes to, to draw from, and they just it's amazing how I watched it, and he just like within like three loads, it was just the thing was just out, and the guys on the ground were just like finishing up, and it was like, oh, that's how you do it. Yeah. You jump on it right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit, so. man. Okay, so you get this skateboard. Nobody knows where it comes from. <laughs> where did the board come from? From when you in high school? Oh, you, you visit your dad or something and get a no. Get a board I think or? I think when I was younger, like I remember, like I have a, a Modesto skate park um, card, and I think I was like eight or so. Oh wow! But uh, you know, my my brother and his 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 friends they were at the skate park, and I remember they were like doing handstands. And, yeah, and, yeah, uh, walk the dog, all those of, things. Yeah, yeah. tic tacs. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was pretty cool. And there was all of a sudden there was like a lot of skate parks, and and then that whole thing just kind of died away. But I just was like, I don't know what, what the what the draw was. I just I felt like connected to just kind of roll. Um, so that four foot half pipe. Is is the next one the Damien ramp? Uh, that was I'm trying to think because I bought a quarter pipe from Damien Sanders and and I didn't even know like you know he was I, I didn't even really know who he was or anything and because a few guys were like oh that's Damien Sanders the snowboarder I was like he snowboards he does that stuff and I had just gotten a wood a Burton backhill that I bought from a a friend of mine for like 150 bucks and uh, that's a lot of like, money at that time I eh? was like I want to go snowboarding sick I was immaculate. And uh, I wish I could get that board back. 85 or 80, <laughs> probably an 84 performer or something like that. No, it was a Burton backhill with the, with the, oh, the full rubber, arm. like the water ski yeah. straps. And, oh, wow, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So the first time I, w- I went up to Bear Valley and that was probably maybe 83 or four. And I went up there and I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to snowboard today. And I went to Bear Valley. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> He hates this story, but I went there and uh, and they're like, I tried to get on the lift. They're like, no, you can't. I'm like, what? What do you mean? It's just, it's like you can't have that. And I go, why? 
He's like, because it's a ski board. I'm like, well, I'm skiing sideways. What's the difference? And he's like, no. And I was like, fuck. The fucking rules? It's like, <laughs> no. fuck you. <laughs> so I went to the Toboggan Hill, ate shit, and didn't really progress at all. But it wasn't until I had met Damien, and he, he was like, oh, you should come to Iron Mountain. That was like the spot. I think it was up uh, 88. And uh, it's closed now. But it was like you park, and then it dropped all down below. And he was there. And he was just, he had hair. <laughs> yeah. Hair 88, Damien. Whew. What was awesome was like, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty hillbilly around here. And you got to earn it. But Damien had like, you know, spider web uh, <laughs> eyeshadow and just spiked hair. And he's always smiling and laughing. And I just remember the first time I met him, I was like, that guy must know how to fight. <laughs> but I don't think he's he's he gets into fights. But if he did, like he, he had to defend himself around here. He but. moved here from the beach, right? Is that the idea? I'm not sure where he originally was from, but yeah, his whole family lived here and Yeah. Um and I don't even think like back then when he snowboarded he can even go to Bear. But now Bear Valley is awesome because it's run by snowboarders. That's the best. <laughs> it's, That's the it's best. It's so incredible there. And I'm not gonna talk how great it is because sorry, Josh again, but we don't wanna <laughs> You don't want to blow it up. <laughs> blow it up, but it's already like Blaze does his uh, boot camp there, and it's. And I that, think I that, might come out in March for that. That's probably worth it. It's so fun. I went last year, and I had a blast. And and I, you know, Blaze, we, we went to the same high school, and I knew Blaze back in the old days. And Blaze is always a pretty chill guy, and uh, he's done well for himself. Snow. He's an incredible snowboarder. I'm, I'm completely incredible. blown away. And today, yeah. to this day, he's still like, it's like, wait, you're not aging. You're still, it's like, <laughs> use it or lose it, which is yeah. the deal. But yeah. what he's really good at, and um, we were just like riding around, you know, there's a bunch of us, and he's all, Johnny, follow me. And I was like, okay, <laughs> go back into attack mode. And we're just like riding in kind of the like slush, and, and he, he just goes, boop over the stump and he's all you got it and and because he said that i just was following him like okay i got it and i just went off the stump thing it was like a something i wouldn't normally go off anymore or anything yeah, like that yeah just yeah for safety reasons <laughs> <laughs> but i just did it and he's really really good at like seeing people's like potential or just like like kind of uh helping them with their fears it's just like you can do it you just got to do it certain people can do that sometimes at a skate park it's like i'll give you three i'll give you five bucks if you do it in three tries there's that guy that yeah. that that sees that you're trying something that's kind of outside your thing and you're just about to like give up he's like five bucks if you do it in the next three tries i've got five dollars right here and pull it out of his you know just that motivator I, I've always tried to be that person for my friends too. Like, I think you could tack another 180 on that or something, you know, like just the motivator, just, it's so much more fun to go up there and you ride and then you pull out your phone. Now you're like, all right, <laughs> do that thing. I saw you do two runs back. Just do it a little bigger. I think you got this. That's it. I fucking love that. Yeah. And Riding his, his friends. snowboard camp is, it's fun. It's just all adults. And, um, you know, when I went up there, I was like, oh, okay, snowboard camp, you know, a bunch of adults. And I, was like, I thought it was going to, you know, I thought it was going to be like, okay, <laughs> bend your knees. <laughs> yeah. Everybody strapped in and was just, boom, gone. And I was like, holy fuck, everyone's really good. <laughs> and I remember, uh, <laughs> I'm looking over the right, oh, just, like people were just carving around me. And I was like, oh, this is, this is, this is going to be fun. And it was super fun. And like, we rode like good long days and, um, and so it was really nice, but. I'm excited to go back this year. Love that guy. Yeah, did you do a talk or a presentation there? <laughs> Supposed to, but w I only had a, uh, a VHS of like one of the old films. I don't even know if I had a DVD. And we tried to like download it, but a cable and TV. And it just didn't happen. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, it was, what were you going to do? Subject Hawkinson? I think we were going to do Subject Hawkin. Yeah. And Hawkinson. And then we're, gonna, we're actually going to do it this year. And, and yeah. I don't know if there's a lot of, you know, I guess the elders that snowboard are, are into it and whatever. And it's just kind of a, like Q&A and just watch it. And, and you know, those films, like I watch them now and I'm just like, oh, there's some really, it's so hard <laughs> to get shots. Oh, uh, my God. It's I can't impossible. even imagine now. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, you got the, the weather conditions, the, the riders, you know, knees. Like everything's blown out and it's got, everything's got to like fall into place perfectly. And it's just, it seems like it's really difficult to get anything in these days. But back then it was just like, it was e a lot easier, but it was still difficult. Music rights and stuff. Did you pay for rights for that thing? Yeah, we had to pay for all the music and, um. That would have been expensive because you've got Primus in there. You've got, like, you've got big name people from that time that were current. Yeah. And Vol Volcom, 
subject Hawkinson through we went through Volcom and they they helped produce it, but they had some music contacts and cool. so they they were kind of tied into the industry. That 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 helped quite a bit. Yeah, that film. So like a lot of viewers will know you from that, but I, I mean, I. I forgot that you were top billed in Western Front until I watched it a few months ago, maybe. And I was like, so it's you? Damien's kind of the... the, the da- Damien's the main he's, dude. He's the uh, He's the role. star. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's the lead role. And and Dana Nicholson is in a little bit. Um, Steve Graham, myself, John Bayaki, um, but, Roach, But there's Tucker. only three of you at the beginning. Like, it's you. top billing goes to you, Damien, and I think Dana. No, 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 Graham. Oh, it's got to be Grammy. Yeah. yeah, of course. Of course it's got to be Graham. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are both on those Lamars. <laughs> yeah, we're, we both... I met Steve Graham down at... Uh, at ASR, and I don't, I don't remember what year it was. I mean, it could have been like it was right around that time, and uh, and that's what right when Bert Lamari had this the uh, the shred shred sled, which was a dry <laughs> snowboard ramp, and they had these. Wow. Like, you got to come try it out, and it was at Vegas. I'm like, I'm not going near that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then Steve was like, Hey, so they're they're putting a tour together, and they want you and I to go and like go and and do demos, and I was like. I was like, oh, Coors Light, Shred Sled, that sounds fun. I just drink beer and like whatever. Yeah. So we'd get there and it's like, all right. And then the, uh, <laughs> the trailer door would come down. It's like, all right, you guys, uh, when you're done setting it up, I'm like, we got to set it up. <laughs> <laughs> the talent setting it up. Too. Where's Bert Lamar and his fucking tool belt? <laughs> That's amazing. So you would put the thing together, do a demo. You pull it up to a shop or something? It was a... <laughs> We did like some stuff in the parks. We did one at a, uh, like in Chico at like a fraternity in the backyard. Oh, that was wow. raging. That was like, uh, you know, I was like, whoa, I never like never hung out with a bunch of college kids. So, what the hell was this sled shed? Was it like a drop in and then a quarter pipe or a drop in a jumper? Well, event, the first design was, was a quarter pipe, so you'd hit it and come back in, but it just didn't work out, so it turned into a little mini, mini yeah. launch, and yeah. then you had to land on the eight foot by eight foot. <laughs> pads wow and uh when you missed it was a little little brutal and we all missed yeah so who <laughs> else who else hits this thing like uh, it's you graham it, yeah it's graham and i and then uh i think roach when we were in sacramento roach showed up so and hit sick. it. And, so sick and uh i don't i'm not sure if brian harper if he came out and did it at all amazing but um was brian riding those lamar boards as well he yeah was. he wrote for look yeah, for look even right. Yeah. So yeah, I forget like it was a look Lamar. So Bert Lamar basically wins the world championships because he knows how that shit works. Yeah. He comes, he sees everybody's practicing the race. He practices in the half pipe for two hours instead of the regular half hour or one that everybody else does, mm-hmm. and he wins it. Yeah. Pisses he had off to learn Craig. How to snowboard. <laughs> yeah, he had to learn how to snowboard and win like, and then he did. So then he signed with Sims. And took the money and then went to look. Yeah. Like he didn't ever really ride for Sims. He he was mad at Tom from when he was a kid. It was what I heard. Oh yeah. From you Ken know, or someone. It's funny because one of the first skateboards I ever had, like a real skateboard, yeah, was a uh, Sims Lamar. Rat. And I I had it. I wish I wouldn't have painted it, but it's got like the cutouts in it and pretty wide and flat and um, yeah. That was my first board. That's amazing. I wonder if I can take the paint off. So would that have had something to do with your decision to, to link up with Lamar after? You're like, no. fuck, this is the Sims Lamar guy. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. It was just coincidental. But That's insane. I, uh, That's awesome. I wrote a letter. Dear K2. <laughs> like, blah, yep. blah, 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 blah. This is, I don't know, this is like 88 or so. Yeah. And it's like, I do these contests and whatnot and, you know, send the photos and the... the <laughs> Chicken scratch resume. Yeah. And they sent me a board. And I was like, oh, K2 no did. Yeah, they sent me a board. What board would it have been? Ecstasy <laughs> the, or something? Uh, the iron ironing board? I don't know. But oh, it was like, yeah. I pulled, because I've always ridden like uh, Kidwell boards. It's the round tails. Yes. The, the second uh, version. And so yep. I pulled it out and I was like, I was like, whoa, look at that thing. Brand new board. Free. And I went to flex it. I was like, <laughs> I was all, that's, it's not gonna work and i i put it back in there and i i shipped it back to them no I wrote a letter and i said i said i said it's a great board it looks really incredible i wish i could ride it but i just i need something softer and, and a little bit more like freestyle riding that's incredible and and uh 
I don't know if I got a letter back or whatever, but I, but I sent that board back. I didn't like keep it and sell it. That's trade, incredible. Trade it for weed or anything right, like that. right. Just like, where did that integrity come from? That, I'm, no, no offense. <laughs> well, that's a good offense. <laughs> that's rad integrity. No defense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just like you just. Yeah, it just seemed like the right thing to do. It's just like I've always had to like work since I was a little kid. It seems like I've had every shit job there is, you know, to make money. I was like. I worked at feed stores, butchering chickens. I worked at a, um, I worked at a shooting range, and they buzz the horn, and we, they're all okay, duck, and we duck. And it was like, and they buzz the horn, and we run out there, and we set up these metal targets again. Jesus Christ! Yeah, that was like my mom did not know. Like she found out about it, and she was so pissed, and she's like, "Don't know." She's a lady. Well, does there, anyone ever get shot at that? Of course not. Like you, you're... not that you read about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. It was safe. There was a dirt hill. It was totally fine. But um, yeah, I've like, you know, I've always just worked. And yeah. I was like, I think when I, when I was a kid, I really, I really wanted to get a trampoline. And, uh, and I was like, mom, can we get a trampoline? She's like, yeah, you can get a trampoline. I was like, cool. A couple of weeks go by. I thought we were going to trampoline. She's like, you want a trampoline? I, I go, yeah. She's like, well, you got to go out and make money. You got to work. I'm like, well, what do you? How do I, how, I got a job. How, what's it like? How do I do that? She's like, you just go and ask for a job. So I went to this, our friends owned a liquor store just a few blocks away. Um, and I was scrubbing the floor and I get like a dollar. And I was like, yes. And that lasts about two days. And I was like, fuck this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was only like seven or eight. Oh my God. But I went, I went over to like, there was a body shop, you know, auto body shop. Sure. Uh, called Shanklin's body shop. And I went there and I just, whatever there was a guy standing there there's like five bays and i just went into the one that the guy was standing there i was all excuse me sir like i'm trying to find some some work after school and he's like come here tomorrow and uh i went there and i swept out a shop and everything like Sick. moved the trash cans and then he handed me a crisp dollar bill and i don't know how long it didn't take that long but that was the deal I, when he was done i would just clean up the shop for him and um and he gave me a dollar bill, and then I go to the liquor store and spend it all on candy. Yeah. <laughs> so you never got the trampoline? I never got a trampoline. <laughs> I wanted one so bad. I bought one for my kids right away. That was like, I'm like, you are growing up with a trampoline. Yeah. It's funny because now trampolines find us. Yeah. People give us trampolines. And I just moved. There was one here that uh, I think it belonged to my brother and his kids, but he brought it here so so I can give it to my kids. But... um. My kids had already, they have it. Somebody gave us a trampoline. <laughs> and so I just moved it again because I'm trying to give it to the neighbors. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a... Having a trampoline was a game changer. Was there, did they ever add a trampoline to the the shred sled or whatever it was? The tra- no, that would have definitely been... <laughs> brute mo- no. I just mean like beside it, somebody hopping on the trampoline, doing all oh, the grabs. Oh, on the side, and someone, like just doing... Yeah, the- yeah. Like, because you're doing a demo, right? Like you're essentially going out there to fraternities or wherever you're winding up just saying like this is snowboarding it's fucking awesome they allow it on ski hills now like buy a board yeah yeah well that was i think my friend sean goulart who who passed away who got me really into snowboarding up and got me up to tahoe up to up to donner summit i remember him like he had a i'm pretty sure it was sean it was like taped off the edges and then in the boots and he was because he had a crail and he was just like so flattened out. It's the most incredible crail of all crails. Yeah. What were your what were your tricks for Western Front? Like, what were your safeties? Mutes, the big rocket mutes. Yeah, the mutes. Uh, I was really good at the uh, the half backflip. <laughs> half flip. <laughs> there was like yeah, it was always like the like you know like the lean air, but it was always like oh yeah, just, I call it like put it in reverse. You go reach out the nose and then put it back there it's like oh yeah put it in reverse <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, it took me forever because when the jib era came in and mutes went flat and cowboy you know like a jamie lynn mute right yeah. like he's he's got the board flat and he's got his cowboy stance and uh and the knees go way out there's a whole era of guys just doing mutes for two years or something yeah i, w- I wonder like when that big kind of cowboy style started because even like Roach, like he started doing indies and he was all tucked in and yes. tough knees and everything. And then it's like, yeah, like Jamie, he had just a bigger stance and his knees were out. And I'm trying to think who else back in that. Day. Well, was, everybody was totally copied Jamie. Style. Everybody copied Jamie. So Devin copied Jamie. Um, like it just, 
all of a sudden there was a Jamie style. Peter copied Jamie. And I can remember for maybe two or three years too long, my mutes were still rocket. Like I'd still grab on the nose. Yeah. Because learning them, like we wanted them straight up and down. You remember that J.D. Platt? You know, he's like got his hand on the back of his head and his forehead's touching the board. The lean drag? Yeah, yeah. There was like all these moves where you'd grab the board and just like it would, you wanted to get it straight up and down. I remember Jason Ford had a like, there was like reach around the arm and then come yep. around and grab the other rail. <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, all right, this is getting a little out of hand, guys. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he would always do those tuck knee mutes too that were like that one over the snow cap where he's just like, the boots were so soft, the Burton two tongues and all that stuff. What boots would you roll when you were when you were sponsored? God, in the begin, well, obviously in the beginning it was Sorrells, and then I think I had, I think I had a pair of like early, early, early Burton boots that had the neoprene liners in them. Yeah, yeah. And that was really soft, and those were those were nice. But I mean, the, back then, like the heel lift was just part of snowboarding. It wasn't really like now. <laughs> yeah. It's like it, it goes off like a quarter inch. It's like I got heel lift. I got to do something. Yeah, Hang those on. Dale boot liners felt like rubber boots. Remember? Yeah, they you could get them wet inside. You could put water inside the boot, and it would just stay there. I had a theory about that. This, this <laughs> neoprene material, right? Yeah. So I was up in Whistler, and I had a hole in my boot, right? Yeah. No, no. I I, I had the boot, and I was like. I was like, I'm just gonna barefoot it in there. You know, I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna wear socks because you, when you wear a wetsuit, you don't wear like a. Yeah. You wear cotton a socks sock. in between it. Yeah. 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 Long johns, and then uh, and I rode, and I was like, "Fuck, I can't even feel my feet anymore." And then at the end of the day, I was like, "Fuck, my foot is fucked." And I looked down, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I got a fucking hole in my boot," and it was like. <laughs> so your foot was frozen. Yeah, I was just packed it full of ice. And, oh and my it, god. It, it was it was fucked up for a while, but it was like that was just dumb. So your main, your, your main like um, sponsored years are the look years because you do a year or two on the trick stick. Was there two years there? Like a, the freestyle and the trick stick and then you get your model with, with Steve Graham. Yeah, I think. And the model with Steve Graham, it was like, I don't, I don't even know how many boards they sold. I don't remember. The like SDX. Royalties. Oh, they didn't even give you guys royalties. Maybe there was a little bit. I don't know. Maybe Graham made some royalties, I hope. I don't, I don't really remember that, but it was just... Um, that's like the year before Exile or something, right? But that's super weird because Western Front. No, no, that was after the... Snowboarders and Exile. Oh, that was after. Yeah, that was like. Uh, yeah, that was after the. Well, yeah, that was after the. Trick stick, and then. Uh, oh yeah, the trick stick. That's what it was. Yeah, it was like the Lamar. I don't remember like the trick stick and the the yellow one and that like uh, blue marbled. Yeah. Trick stick, which is which is smaller. And it had, I think it still had the same shape. That shape was not that functional, hey? No. <laughs> like a lot of people tried those boards and just were like, nah. I think I think Farmer tried one. He was like, nah, this doesn't work. The two sweetest things that came out of that look deal, three. Yeah. One was the yellow look pants. <laughs> Amazing. That was Those yellow look pants are the reason that Burton did the yellow pants. Well, I remember I, I saw, and I don't remember who had them on. It might have been like, yeah, I don't even know if it was Bert. It was like somebody had them. I was like, ooh, those are like snowboarding pants. Yes. That was like a big thing. And so like when yeah. I finally got a pair, I was like, Phew. and I have one pair. <laughs> oh, wow. Rank would said that if he could have anything from Craig's archives, any one item, it'd be his yellow look pants. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He said those were the, that was the thing. Yeah. Everybody yeah, maybe it was Craig them. I saw where, I don't remember, but it was like some big name pros. So I was like, yeah. ooh, those are legit. And, um. And meeting Steve Graham and becoming friends with Steve Graham. And um, so I was like regional, right, with with, uh, with Lamar. So I went to, to Vegas to the ASR show when it was in Vegas. And I was like, oh, yeah, the French guys are going to be there, like the big wigs. And these guys are all wearing suits and ties. And I was like, fuck, I got to get a haircut. I got to shower. <laughs> <laughs> you can't yeah. cut my nails. I got to fucking... <laughs> I love it. Put some deodorant up, <laughs> new shoes, and try not to be a dirtbag. And uh, and I remember meeting these guys in their own suits, and they're all, oh, you know, these French guys. And I was like, oh, these guys are fucking serious, you know. And then they're like, oh, we're going to go out for dinner. And I was like, oh, fuck. All right. And we went out to dinner, and we got so hammered. And those guys were in the elevator, like, picking each other up and throwing them out. And just like, they were like, they just turned into these big, drunk little kids. And I was awesome. Like, I'm with them. Awesome. 
They're that's, normal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're like us, but they just had to like polish it up for the show to sell boards to keep their, um, <laughs> and, and then, and, uh, that, that was, uh, to make a long story short, that was, was Jacques Gris. That's, uh, okay. that's who was, who kind of ran look in, um, in France. And, and what he, was their he was deal? Awesome. They had, they had cornered the ski binding market. If I remember correctly, like well, they, they had, were... they had, yeah, they had ski bindings as well as they had, um, pedals. Pedals were their big seller for, for bikes, for road bikes. Yeah. Oh fuck. They had like a clip in pedal. So then they never did skis. They just went straight to snowboards. They did pedals. They did bindings for skis and then they did snowboards. Yeah. And I don't know how or where those boards were made. Were there Lamar bindings look or look bindings like snowboard bindings? Well, they eventually came up with a, um, a whole new system. They're like, Oh, this is going to be revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, so their, yeah. their whole market was like, okay, so you get this binding. So, so for, places that want to rent snowboards instead mm -hmm. of like moving it around there was a cable release and you can just move them anywhere you want like okay they rotated and you yeah. lock them down a cam system yeah and so they're like here you guys got to ride these and we're like okay and we started at the top of the pipe <laughs> like this and we get to the bottom and wanted you know would be like yes. this and we're just laughing yeah. like this, yeah there's no way like these things just do not work there's just not they just there's just little cables and it just it just didn't work yes and um I don't even remember what bindings we. I think we. I think we all used just like Sims bindings. Sims were, were big at that time. Burton yeah. was really big when you guys had the SD, <coughs> SDX. <coughs> that would have been sick to share a pro model with fucking Steve. Yeah. You yeah, guys but at that, I think when that when that came out, I didn't even know that was even coming out. And it was like the S. I was like the S. I was like SD. Like Steve, Dave. Oh, SD, I got it. Yeah. Steve, Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was already like in the, I was already into, you know, starting to film and into that mode. So I was like, all right, SDX. And but that, were you filming during the Rosie years? So the Rosie years follow d directly after the look stuff, right? Yeah. What happened with that is I was just still French guys, and more French guys. Mm -hmm. So what happened with that is, um, like I was already like, okay, I'm I'm kind of done with snowboarding. I just want to film and, and try to like put together some projects and film, travel. I'm still doing the same thing. Um, and then Rosinal called, and I don't know how it became. I'm trying to, I'd have to backtrack a little bit, but I ended up like I got a call, and they offered me like a three-year contract and help help them design boards, rad, and like pro models. And I was like, I don't know if I deserve it, but I'm. I will jump on board because I was more into the design aspect of it. Sure. Because I sure. had some ideas that I wanted to try, which is flexes and like side cuts. And, and they're pretty open-minded to, to, to do things. And yeah, I was like, what if we just make a board with just like one layer of glass? Yeah. Like what would happen? And and it was, I just wanted to make this. <laughs> it was like a cheating butter board. And yeah. I still have that board. Because you could just take it and you, and you just yes. you just lift up your front foot. Yeah. And it goes, yeah. <laughs> and you can hold it there. I love it. And uh, it, it was pretty simple. Like. You know, like Roach and Terry, like those guys can like legit, you know, nose press and tail press. Totally. And, um, but I couldn't, so I was like, I, I need some training wheels. Yeah, Rankwick, <laughs> Rankwick claims to have come up with the butter term, well, that Craig came up with it to make fun of him. It's like you're buttering toast over there or something like that. They were making fun of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, that was a whole era. Like that Terry's stuff in Roadkill is like still legit today if you go watch the roadkill buttering stuff yeah no like, it's it's it's, it's badass yeah because yeah it's like terry probably saw like you know roach and those guys doing it and um was like oh i can do that but better <laughs> yeah. that and was he did. his mode at that at that <laughs> stage at that He's age like, oh, I, just, I could do that i'll try it and you're just like shh <laughs> Tell me about the idea behind Subject Hackinson. Like, does he call you up and say, "Dave, make a movie about me," or do you go, "Hey, Volcom, I I've got this idea. We'll, let's let's focus on one dude." No, he wasn't like, "I want to make a film about me." He wasn't. He's definitely pretty low key. But uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I brought the idea and asked him, like, like we should make a we should make a Terrier film. And I think it, like you know like. I met Terry in Japan when he was 15. Okay. And it was like, oh, that's that Norwegian kid who's just like, who copies Craig Kelly. Yes. And it was just like, just watching, it was just like watching Craig Kelly, but go bigger, <laughs> more technical. <laughs> yes. And yep. uh, when Craig backed off, I think Terry stepped in and just took Craig's tricks. To, Terry to never 
beat Craig. Oh, he never did. No, Craig engineered it. So oh, that that's he, so awesome! Isn't that amazing? I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. And never will. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. So you knew him from, you know, watching from, him coming up. You're like, okay, this is. Craig picked him to be his replacement. Is what it felt like. Yeah, but it, that was in Japan when I was still I was still snowboarding and. Like Steve and I, like they sent us to contests, but they weren't expecting contest results. So we just go there and just completely just not get caught. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't. We're just like I don't know why we're here, but we're, I'm having a fucking blast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's epic. Yeah, that's the cherry. So gig. The, the whole contest thing, it wasn't like I mean, a lot of people were there and they're like, I gotta, I gotta win or I gotta do good. And the the best contest result I ever got was. Uh, I got a second place behind Craig. Wow. And I don't remember where it was at. And then third place was uh, was Scott, upside downy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. And um, Yeah, man. But I don't know, like, probably all the other, like, Brushy and Palmer, they probably fell. That's why I, right. that's why I slipped sure. in a second, but it was sure. just a random No, that's thing. still, hey, man, I'm a, <laughs> I, I'm a huge fan of your snowboarding. Like, you were ripping. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, it was such a cool era because it was like, I can remember whoever brought the Western Front, it would have been my friend Joel who owned the shop. Like mm -hmm. he would go to, he would go to San Diego and then he would come back and it would be, you know, the fall and he'd be like, you got to see this. Like come to my house right now. You're not going to fucking believe it. So he Hot did that. The press. He did that with Western Front. We taped it. I watched it every day at my house, wore out the tape. Whoa, whoa, wait, he bootlegged it? He bootlegged it. He owes you guys... He owes whatever that is, 30 bucks or whatever. I like the Bones Brigade, too. <laughs> yeah, That's right. we did, tape to tape. Tape to tape, was that was the deal. And then he did the same thing the next year with Exile, and but it was like, I was like, dude, you know, it's not snowboard season for a while, like, chill. And he was like, no, you need to come here today. You have no idea. Like, Snowboarders in Exile was like, it was such a next level movie because it was a buddy movie. It was you know like it was so quotable there was so much like it was, it was a travel movie all of a sudden it was like all over the world you guys are stealing Burt Lamar's car which was oh epic. that's Snowboarders and Exile yeah, yeah that's Exile yeah. so Exile when he told me you got to come see this movie I got I was like yeah I get it Western Front like it's cool yeah. like I can see it later he's like no you need to see it today well after the Western Front uh you know Jerry and Artie they uh they got a film camera it was a, a Bolex sick i don't remember if it was electric or i think it was electric one but i remember we went that's the first real trip we went on the first like kind of like travel adventure we drove Artie's truck out to jackson hole and we were out there and we we're it was some other like kind of co-project with uh a couple other skiers it was like um oh, kevin shit. andrews and wow griff davis and and we're like, we knew him from Tahoe, like from Squaw and Tahoe. And, th and those guys were great. And it was like, we've never really been on a trip with skiers, you know? Like, <laughs> they do their thing, we do our things. Yeah. So we drive out there, <laughs> Graham and I are in the back of the truck, like, <laughs> in the back of the truck, like, Graham's just drinking beer. I'm like, dude, that's fucking, beer's cold. Like, I don't, you want a beer? I'm like, no, I want a fucking, Hot like, chocolate. something warm. I want a fucking blanket. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> And so we just went all in the back of the truck the whole way. It was Fuck. Like, it was fucking roots. And uh, and so we get out there and we finally could stay in a hotel. And I was like, oh, turn the heat on. <laughs> and so, and when we were there, you know, Jerry and Artie, they had the, the camera and like one would wear the backpack and the other unzip it, you know? And like, I don't remember if Jerry or Artie, I think they were taking turns, but it was like, it was like, because it was so fucking cold. <laughs> And they're like, we need, we need to put some oil. <laughs> I remember like something about like trying to put an oil in it to oh kind of gear it up, but it was just so cold is why it wasn't running slow. But you know, I think they put heat packs and it ended up working out. But that trip, because this is at the same time like um, Blizzard of Oz had, had already come out and like um, Plague and it, and Schmidt. It was like those guys were like legends, and that that movie was was done really well. It was like a it was kind of a the progression of like Warren Miller, it was no, a hundred percent, a cool guy, ski film, you know, and there was adventure yeah. and travel without all the uh, goofy narration. Right, right. There was narration, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like. Yeah, like that Warren Miller genre was like he had it wrapped up. I loved seeing his movies; it was hilarious. I mean, it's I gotta say, for Warren Miller, I mean, he 
that guy has made so many films mm -hmm. and he's done it longer than anybody and he l left a legacy behind it's like yeah. really incredible like when i was younger i was like oh warren miller ski films blah 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 that would and i would like fucking snot-nosed dumbass would just talk <laughs> shit about it and in retrospect now like look back i was like i have no idea how i mean he was the only game in town i guess but yeah how did he do it for so long and it's just like his heart and soul was into it and he had it he had his like he had his recipe and it was like you know they just like everybody go out and film eventually when he probably got guys to go out and film and then he'd come in and sit down there and like give me that mic <laughs> <laughs> here's how you do it here's, here's how you, how you make it, a son. ski film kids guess who he brought to the vancouver premiere of his warren miller movie it would have been 94 or 95 take a wild guess Burt Reynolds? <laughs> Close. Noah Selaznick. Oh, really? I met Noah in Vancouver in like was 94. Noah in his, in his film? Noah was in a Warren Miller film. Oh, I he didn't was know like that. he was like the talent that was like the celebrity at the sh at the ski show. It was nuts. Wow. Cuz cuz it's like you know, like a little regional ski show. Yeah. You know, the Warren Miller movie is like one of the highlights that they put on the news. Oh, like, there's going to oh, be a Warren yeah, Miller in, in every town. Yeah, all over in the every US. town. I remember all over the place. when I was yeah. younger, I was like, oh, cool, the Warren Miller film's going to come. I'm gonna check exactly. It out. I did the same thing. I was into it. And it was Noah. I think it was MLY era Noah. Oh, it is not. I, I never knew that about Noah. Yeah. It's yeah. Laz. It, it definitely seemed out of place as far as like, fuck, Noah got a raw deal, dude. Like, he was the shit for, like, four years in a row. It was just like, uh, and even, like, Western Front. He's got shots in Western. Yeah. On, on a Kemper. But, yeah, and not even, not even shots in there. It was like, Noah was kind of like, I look, I look back at those old films, and I watch those guys ride, and I was like, fuck, they're so much better than us, and so much more style. And I look at Chris Roach, I'm like, I got the elbows. Oh. And I just look at it, and the way he rides now, or back then, I was like, and him and Tucker and, and yeah. uh, I was like, fuck, there's, they're just so much better than like Graham and I, and just a totally different style. And I can't even say skate style, but just like you watch Chris ride and everything, he's just he just rolling right over and like, you know, he, he's like, he'd be like, okay, just hit that, and just bunny off of it. It's always the bunny. It's <laughs> he's, always he's the bunny. He's got his own vernacular. Yeah. The, the yeah. Jeeve. Yeah. Jeeve. Yeah. So like he was, and when I say raw deal, I think he was poised to be on the forum launch. Salaz? Salaz was. So had he gotten that forum break, and no offense to anybody at, at MLY or Molly or that, that whole thing, it just, his career just kind of petered there. He just didn't get, they didn't have the budget to put him in the Mac Dog <coughs> shit or in the standard stuff, like, because it was starting to be pay for play, right? You had to throw down the 10 Gs. And get your rider in there. But he, yeah. but he was in there, wasn't he? And like... Oh yeah, for sure he still was, but there, like he was such a standout in like TB two, TB three, TB four. Like he was just. But he was like in in, in when, like Pocahontas, and he was yep. he was like he yep. was Dogger's guy. He was know? Dogger's guy. Well, he he team. brought Dogger up there for the first time. Oh yeah, that's right. Because that, Dogger was making like he made film like skate films, yeah. like Super Eight and like yeah, Eight Street like, stuff. Yeah, yeah, Eight Street stuff and legit. Yeah, yeah it was totally awesome. Yeah, that shit was amazing. Mm -hmm. And Noah, like, he straddled both worlds. He was, like, a legitimate pro skateboarder yeah. and a legitimate pro snowboarder. A lot of you guys were. Were you a vert ramp? Yeah, you had a vert ramp. So. Yeah, but I sucked at skating <laughs> compared to, like, those guys. Those like guys Hetzel were real skaters. I was, like, recreational. AV. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, never, I never got that good at skating either. I, it was a really difficult. Uh, like, that's the real deal, dropping in on vert. and you, I saw some photos of you catching air at the... Del Mar or something? Yeah. Solid, solid, almost a foot. Still, that's a, that, I don't know how deep <laughs> that fucking bowl was. That's concrete. You're going in the air. It's concrete and it was lumpy and like you watch those guys skate it and it's like, whoa, they make it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> they make it look fun and it's like you get in there and it's like, it's like slow fast. It's, it was a whole different deal. Like I never had any concrete time under my belt, but I was just there for a day. Yeah. So. Yeah. So was that parent stuff or it sounds like you're working from a pretty young age and then you probably get a car when you're 16 and I had a car when I was 13. <laughs> what? No, the no, fuck? Four, I'm 13 or 14. Jesus, like, dude. Because I can drive on these dirt roads. Of course. So I, yeah. I, I used to drive over to the end of the dirt road and go to my, my buddy, Matt Glover's house and 
um, it's a it's a mile away. But I'd drive to the end of the dirt road, and then I'd walk across like this long field to get to his house. I never drove on the highway. And then one night I was I was coming back. It's probably like I think I was like fifteen. I was older. Yeah, fifteen. <laughs> and uh, I'm coming back, probably a little semi pickled at that age, experimental. So I I I. I I could see like like cop lights and I was like what the fuck, and then there's like cops with the flashlights looking in the car and I just pop out of the this is before they just draw a gun on you right right <laughs> right and I was like hey and they flashlights like right in my face they're all who are you I go that's my car and they're like and I walk down there and they're like well what are you doing and I'm like well I, I only I can only drive to the, I don't have my license I'm only like 15 I can't drive on the road so I just my mom said I could drive it to the end of the road is that okay and Cops looked at each other and they were like, "Yeah, you're fine." And he's like, "He's like, thanks for being honest with us." I was like, wow. Yeah. I'm like, "Are is that?" I go, "It's okay, right? Like, it's a private road and property." He's like, "Yeah, you're good." That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I drove a car when I was 15 with my buddy Pete Brown. Yeah, that shit's awesome. So yeah. you were driving a car from when you were a kid. Yeah. When you turned 16, do you buy a car and now? Well, you... I had. I it was uh, the first car I had was a. Uh, I got it from my stepdad. And it was a Toyota Corona, and it was just a crappy little car, four door, tin tin can, but it ran yeah. fine. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sell this thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a Volkswagen Bug. That's what I really wanted. So I got a yeah. Volkswagen Bug. So I sold that. Did I trade it and sell it? <clears throat> so I got a Volkswagen Bug. That needed motor work. It wasn't even running, <laughs> and so I brought it back here, and I was like, "Okay, I gotta like pull the motor out." And somebody gave me it. I had a book like, you know, the Volkswagen for idiots. Yeah, book. yeah. You know that one? Yeah. It was before the dummies. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, idiots. yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I it was just like looking at it. I'm like, okay, four bolts. Okay, and then like lower it down, and I was like, okay, I need like a dolly. And I was like, okay, my skateboard, and I put it on my skateboard, and it was in the dirt, and I pulled the motor out, and I was like, okay. I got the motor out <laughs> and I just, I figured it out on my own. I was using like channel locks, <laughs> the worst tools. <laughs> That's um, insane. But I made it work and I got, I got it, I got it fixed. And some, somebody helped me out. It's like something with the like the push rods were bent and it just needed some head work. But I got it going and I put the motor back in there and it ran fine. And then um, the day I turned 16, I was at DMV taking my test. Yeah. And I was like, yes, because you're stuck. Here. You're stuck. Yeah, and there was no video games to hang out and play. It was like this was this was awesome. This was the best thing about growing up around here back in the day. We had a television set and we had VCR. You know, we watched movies at night, but like we didn't. There was no video games. There was no like hanging out inside watching the shitty ass TV with bad reception. It was like I was outside, so I'd come home, and there was no my, my brother wasn't around. My parents weren't around. And I remember I would just make shit. Like I'm just fucking making shit all the time. I made a hang glider. I made a hang glider out of PVC and plastic and duct tape. I was like, fuck yeah. That's fucking we're on incredible. A hill, right? Yeah. And I got you're on it. On a I huge like, hill. I, I was like, I'm gonna fucking I wanna see if this thing works. And I fucking had it. It was pretty big. <laughs> and I start running down the hill. And I was just like, let go. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I'm so glad at that age that I could figure out that that was a horrible idea. And I was like, because you're going to get, you're going to get too high up in the air. It's going to break. Well, I was and like, well, what if it did killed. fly? Like, yes. and then I'm going to get up there safe. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, I'm going to yeah. fucking die. I was just threw it away. I was like, this, that's dumb. I was just into the, the manufacturing. You know? That's incredible though. That's so dope. And so the other thing too, it was great over here, behind us over here, that the hill, it gets, when it rains really heavy, it turns in not like a river, but it's re they're really saturated. And, um, uh, I had a skimboard and I was like, I wonder if I could skimboard that. And I would, I would walk up to the hill. This is pouring down rainstorm, right? Yeah. And I'm up there just doing laps, like running up the hill, running in in, in like a wet t-shirt and surf trunks. I love it. Tight ass quicksilver trunks and just like ripping down the hill, like sliding. That's that. I did that before I learned how to snowboard, and uh, it, it might have helped. Oh, I remember of course. My mom <laughs> coming up the dirt driveway and she's like, what? She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm skimboarding. <laughs> She's like, you're, you're going to catch a cold. <laughs> Classic mom. Yeah. You're going to catch a cold. I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, I'm, I'm sweating. Yeah. It's so hot out here. And she's just like, okay. And that, just, that's just amazing. Like, that's a, yeah. Discover. The, it's a different life, right? Like we live in a different time. Our kids live in a different time. Imagine your kid driving at 13. Well, my, I, <laughs> my 11 year old, I'm like, 
okay, you ready, George? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, you can reach the pedal now, so you're good. And so he's like, I taught him how to drive, and he's 11. Oh, my God. That's I, I let him drive. I was like, okay, it's a little dodgy right here. We were way up, and we were up by Arnold. We were way out in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, okay, wait, just stop. We got to put it in four-wheel drive. <laughs> and I, just, I just let him maneuver and just go. And I'm like, okay, it's uh, before he learned how to drive, I go, the two things, the biggest thing, before you drive, do not slam on the brake, one foot, like, don't punch the gas. I go, it's all about the feather. Like, feather. Don't do this. Yep. It's like, all, yeah. if you can just feather, yeah. brake, and gas, you'll have it dialed. And just look ahead. And he's like, okay. So he, he's he got it. And he's, oh, that's now awesome. I just like, when, when they're around, you know, like, they, uh, they just fucking drive. And my eight year old, he's like, <laughs> Bubba, it's my turn to drive. I'm like, you can't reach the pedal yet. You can sit on my lap and steer, but you can't reach the pedal. Like, <laughs> that's you, when you can reach the pedal, you can drive. Yeah. He's like, okay. Yeah. I think I did the same with my with my kids. I'll have to ask him. I I know I, because my son is four years younger than my daughter. You know, she's ready to drive at twelve, mm -hmm. thirteen. You know, just up and down a back road or whatever. And so then, yeah, he probably would have started maybe nine or ten. Yeah, as soon as he could reach the pedals. Yeah, but I I also and I don't know where I got it, but I. I I got a go kart when I was when I was oh, younger. Oh wow! And so these roads, like, yeah. There's a lot of houses on here now, but back in the day, <laughs> I said like back in the day, <laughs> way back then. I would I would like like okay, there's no cars. I go up on the highway. I go up and I go on. I turn around because it was asphalt and there's lots of gravel, so you can hit that at full speed, which is maybe like 25 miles an hour, 30 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. And you can drift and you're like so oh, rad. And you just drift that thing and you hit the dirt. And you just keep going, and I was just flying. I was just like drifting every single turn in there, and not there was nobody to, to complain. <laughs> That's so you know, there was like dude. three or four houses out here. That was yeah, it. yeah. And so it was like whatever. So you were just a wild kid. Well, it was experimental, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that just <laughs> kept going the whole way through. So yeah. when do you pick up a camera? Kind of go. So that that was like a. The camera thing was... You helped Jerry and Artie. There's photos of you helping him. Well, bef before I went to Tahoe, I, I went to... I've always... This is to backtrack where it really started. In yeah. elementary school... I'm trying to think of that. The teacher... He taught... Like, we got to learn photography. We got cameras. That's fucked up. And we got to shoot. And awesome. And so we, he's just like, yeah, just go out and shoot, whatever. And I remember looking at the windows and... They were in a long grid, and it went from big to small. So I just was like, oh, this is pretty cool, the, the way it lines up like that. And I took a photo of it, and then he processed everything. We weren't processing anything then, but um, but he was doing a slideshow, and he's like, he's like, came came to my photo, and he's like, who took this photo? <laughs> and, and I was like, yeah. I did. He's like, this is great. And I was like, it really inspired me because of a teacher like was like, this is cool. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm photographer <laughs> i'm a photographer <laughs> and it wasn't until like and then i went to you know the junior colleges were just way easier to go to so what was cool about the junior colleges they have all these great tools and so i would just go mm. to use all their mm -hmm. tools and so i went to school down in stockton and delta and i and the photography teacher like i would take photos and he was like you can't you can't do that he was like Oh, Ansel and I, he's like, a, he's an older guy. He's like, oh, yeah. well, one time Ansel and I, and I was like, fuck Ansel. I mean, Ansel's a fucking amazing photographer. And it took a lot, it's a, that's an art form that nobody else could touch back then with what he had to work with. Yeah. But, um, dodge and burn. <laughs> that's what it was. But, uh, he was like, well, you can't, it's too contrasty. There's no in-between grays. I'm like, well, that's just the way I'm shooting. And he's like, well, you can't shoot like that. I'm like, why? Why can't I shoot like that? And that was sucked about like a teacher just like, I understand like traditional, like I didn't, I, I thought I was just taking a photography class. I didn't know I was taking an Ansel Adams class. <laughs> I'd rather learn from Ansel Adams, not like the Ansel Adams fucking kiss ass teacher. So I was just like, fuck, fuck that guy. Yeah. And it sucks when people are like, well, it's not the way I do it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, especially especially someone who's supposed to be a mentor and a helper to, like, stoke you out on something. Yeah. They're going, yeah, okay, I see zero potential in what you're doing. You know, like, with, with, the, with snowboarding and, like, my kids, my boys, I just, like, they would get frustrated. I'm just like, dude, just, <laughs> first I go, first of all, just relax. Yeah. Like, just, yeah. Like, you'd be stuck in the powder, you know, they're little kids. And I'm just yeah. like, okay, yeah. you're in the snow. Like, just, just 
I'm like, cartwheel, snow angel, you're waiting. I go, you're not going to be stuck here. You're fine. You're, it's frustrating because you can't move. Yeah. But I go, just relax. And, I, and they get frustrated. And my, they were like going for it. And, I, and they get frustrated. And I go, I go, George, I just need to let you know it's a, it's a piece of plywood. That yeah. you slide down the hill on to yeah. have fun. Yeah, I go. Yeah. Don't get caught up in trying to be good. Like it, <laughs> there's no such thing as being good. What's good is just you having a good time. Yep. And um, and that just took the pressure out of like I didn't put any pressure on. I'm like, oh, you got to be a snowboard. I'm like, just fucking. We're just going out there and we're gonna have fun. And when we go out, we just have fun. Like it's it's funny because it's like we're throwing snowballs at each other. Yes. And we're just yeah. we're just yeah. And every time anybody any of those those little guys stop, I just. Just bury them in snow and they love it and they do it to me too and that's it's, epic it's, it's really cool but last week up at uh donner ski ranch we were there and i mean it's the first of the year but i knew a little spot and i'm like oh it's like snow is soft here and i go george i go here um, watch out <laughs> george get out of the way and so i i just went past and it was only it was just a little small thing but it was like per the snow was like boop and he's like, Papa, I want to try it. And I'm like, Oh, you you're gonna you're gonna go off it? And he's like, Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And he went to go off it and then he realized like he can't see where he's gonna go. So as soon as he went off, he was just all ah Yeah. And yeah. I told him I go, you just went for it. Like that, yeah. that's that's the best part. It's, it's like the it best. don't worry about like landing it and all that. He said, just have fun. Yeah, my kids, I didn't even teach them to toe side turn. I, I didn't make them link turns. It just looked too hard. I was like, fuck, just go on your heel side. Just yeah. go on your heel side forever. Just keep up. Let's go. We're just going heel side. You go heel side. Then you go heel side. Then you go heel side. And then in grade five, they went with the school. And the teacher, or the, you know, the snow instructor was like, you got to link turns. But the first day they had to link turns. They could, they're like, dad, I could do toe side now. They could just snake down the run. I probably could have taught, taught them how to do it. Yeah, but no, no, that's good. That's that's the same way I, 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 I taught them as well. It's like, yeah. okay, we're just going to go on, on the toes. That's it. You're just going to traverse across your toes. Yeah. And don't worry about the turn. Just fucking fall, get yeah. on your butt, and then go get to your heel, and then and, and just stay on your heels. And I always... I always teach people that want to learn how to snowboard. I hate teaching snowboard. I hate it's it too. Special. It's the worst. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or blood. I always just tell them like, like it's like a, it's like you're on your tippy toes, right? Mm -hmm. So you're on your tippy toes, but you're trying to keep your knees bent at the same time. It's hard to do it when you stand there and you try it. Yeah. It's hard to do it, and but when you're moving, it helps. And same thing with your heels. Like you, you're on your heels like this, and you're you're bending your knees, and you're keeping your mass like over the top of your whole body without bending forwards or backwards, and <clears throat> last week we my 11 year old he's like can we go down that and i was like all right and so he it was kind of steeper and he was struggling i go hey, george i just told him i can just see it he was just struggling and i said when you when you go to start your turn put your whole body down the hill and step on your front foot and when you go to do your toe turn and he did that he goes boop and he was right around and he's like oh it works <laughs> <laughs> and it was just changed his whole deal and now he was like he's more confident on the steeps and there's that's that's the beauty of of snowboarding for 30 i don't know 35 years Jesus. 36 years since 80 let's do the math do you have the app let's do the math if the it app, was back it in 84 be... let's call it 84 okay so 80 if it was if it was 2024 right now there'd be 40 years mm -hmm. so it's just uh two years less than that yeah so 38 jesus fuck that's a lot. It, that can't be possible. No. What do you mean? It can't be possible. Snowboarding's been around for a 38, while. 38, but then that was yeah, on the you were 17. Hill. So you were 17 when you started. That makes sense. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. But it wasn't until I was uh, 18, 18 or 19, when, I think I was 18, I ended up at up at Donner Summit and, and, and snowboarding. Like you got a job, time. right? Like, And then you were just like, you, you were the lifty up there? Is that right? Well, that was like when they were handing out the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, mountain operations and such it was like it was like do you want to be a lift op or work in the kitchen i was like there's no fucking way i'm going to be out there as a lift op it's not it's like i would love to be out there like lift opping but there's no way i'm going to be out there watching my buddies like yeah, oh it's yeah, so killer yeah, yeah, yeah 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 here's your chair yeah yeah <laughs> so i was like if i just stay inside it's warm yeah free food you're cooking food you're, yeah, cooking yeah, food, yeah. and then they're gonna come in and then they're it. gonna need yeah. me yeah 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 <laughs> So I was just like, I'm, I'm working inside. There's no way I'm going to be out there. And it wasn't because of like a lift off or whatever. I just knew that I was going to be fucking bummed watching my friends just ride. That, that early crew that Tina um, named off, I, I'm like, that's fucked up. Like, that's just like crazy that that group of people all came up riding together. 
So it's like you, you got um, Damien, you got the Bassiches, you got the Roaches. Mm -hmm. Like even that's a lot, but you've also got Tucker Franson. And there's, is John Biocchi one of those Yeah, Biocchi was one. Biocchi. Um, and Neil Rankin was out Rankin, there too. Rankin, Jesus. Yeah. That's nuts. That's nuts. That is actually nuts, right? Like, because when you look at the ski areas that are here, there's 20 of them? Yeah. And there's not, cool. there's not 20 crews like that. That's impossible. Well, it's, you know, it was the best part was like, when those guys came up on the weekends and I had, I somehow finagle got the weekends off and got to ride with those guys. That was the best part because it was like, it was, there was be like five or six of, uh, of us riding together and it was tip to tail. And, yeah. and every snowboard kid has a story of riding with their, their, yeah. their fucking posse. Training <laughs> up. Yeah. With their crew, their group. Yeah. Yeah. And we were, this was before posse or uh, crew. <laughs> He's correct. Yeah. We were riding in a bunch. Like we were, back then, it was Our a bunch. bunch. There's a bunch of us, five or six. The Donner Bunch. The Donner Bunch. And uh, yeah, and we were, it was tip to tail, and it was like North Trail. It was like boop, 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 you know, and whoever, it's like, it's like you didn't fall because somebody's going to land on you. Yeah. And everybody was just tip to tail, and it was just, you were so fired up, and it was, it was fun. Yeah, well, it made world champions, right? Like, Damien was like the extreme world champion, which is a thing that he was so good at it that he got the Trans World Most Extreme Award two years in a row. He didn't even ride the second year. Yeah. Like, it was like, he didn't even have to ride the whole, the people were just like, Most Extreme, Damien, 100%. 100%. And Tina became, you know, a 20-year competitor, like a, a staple, like pushed women snowboarding. Yeah. You became a world-class cinematographer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd use the W word. <laughs> You yeah absolutely your films were like top tier films like the White Balance film was that what it was called it was called the Sean uh, Sean White uh, the White album is actually the White album the White album is that that name is actually owned you think it was owned by the Beatles, the Beatles. But it's actually owned by Alanis Morissette she owns the title the White album what? so I was like well this is That's the, rad. this is the Sean yeah Sean White album yeah 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 and so um. Because he was into guitars, and that's that's how it kind of like formed that way. It was just trying to do. Something. Did you have a friendship just, with him? Like, I, well, I did a movie for Arnett a long time ago. Okay. Called My Way, and it was a multi sport moto surf, but it was like the best of everybody, and it was so incredible. Dope. To work on that because I just got shipped all over. I mean, I went to I went to to Pipeline. I've never even been to Hawaii. <laughs> oh, wow. And Mike Parson snips. He like you know he's big. Big wave, and he's like, "Okay, Shiona, you're coming to, you're coming to Hawaii with me." I'm, you know, and I'm filming. I've never even filmed surfing before. <laughs> and I get there, and I go, I go, "Hey, Snips." He's like, "What?" And I go, "I bet you I'm the only guy in Hawaii with the wool socks on right now." And he's like, "Fuck, are your feet hot?" And he's like, "What are you doing?" And I remember we stayed in like Sunset Beach was right there. And I just remember I couldn't sleep. I was like, "Fuck, it's so fucking loud." It's quite the, loud. The, the yeah. Waves. Thunder and, all night. And all those guys, all those surf guys, they I totally got along with them well because of the fact that I wasn't trying to be a surfer. I was not yeah. a surfer, and yeah. I didn't claim to be a surfer or Rad. say, like, oh, this one time I was surfing. <laughs> None of that. I was like, fuck, you guys are fucking... I go, you're going you're gonna to paddle out in that whitewash, that foam, like 20-foot wall of foam coming in. And you just, like, uh, Pat O'Connell just, boop, right underneath it. I was like, holy shit, man, those guys are, those guys are strong. But the best part about all those pro surfers, they were like... You know, they're like top of their game, but everywhere we go, they're like, dude, I, I need to get a leash. I'm like, well, you know the fucking easiest part of the equation? You don't have a leash. You don't have wax. You're like, you don't have any of that shit. Accessories. I think you guys do it just so you can go to the surf shops and be like, yeah, here I am. <laughs> need but, a new leash. And Broke it was, my it, leash. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. And the funnest part about that whole like my way thing, it was like, it's like Luke Egan, Pat O'Connell. I'm trying wow. to think who else was there. It was like, it was like world class surfers, right? Yeah. And uh, we were sitting at um, at Pipe, sitting on there, and it was <laughs> it was like just very it wasn't breaking or anything. It was like, and they were like, "Okay, Shion, are you ready to surf Pipe?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm ready." And yeah. Like, Come on, we're taking you out. And I was just like, they were just like, it was fucking fun, and they're like, they're like. They were like pushing me into these little tiny little rollers, you know. <laughs> it's just so flat. And they're like, "Yes, you know, you're serving pipe." I'm like, "Dude, this shit's overrated. I can't. It's way bigger than the postcards and the movies, dude. Just, this, is, this is easy." I remember seeing a guy coming out of the water with a half a surfboard, 
like I don't know if he was bleeding. He was definitely like thousand, so out of his thousand yard stare. Uh, yeah, he was just like, "What the fuck? My friend said I could do it." It's like, oh my god, I there. I, there's never been a point in my life where I looked at surfing and was like, "I can." I'm going to learn to do that. I also never claimed that I would do the Baker Road Gap. Like I looked at it and I was like, okay, that is just yeah. That's where <laughs> I've never had an interest in doing yeah. it. As well. No, it just looks like it looks like so. If you caught your edge, like you need to milk every bit of speed to get across that, and then like I just looked at it and went, mm, it's too. That's not. I'm not that good. Who do you think the Baker Road Gap uh, poster child was? I've got to give it to Farmer. I have to. Yeah. Like, it, you, it, shirt off? Yeah. Are you kidding yeah, yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you fucking joking? <laughs> yeah. He was the first guy and to he build got a poster. it. Yeah. And so he's the literal <laughs> poster guy. Is that a, was that was he on a summit with that? He was. Jeez, oh, I don't know. Probably. Maybe he possibly. stepped down to like a, a two oh five or something. I I <laughs> definitely would say today my favorite to see is Pat McCarthy because he's still sending it. Yeah. And he's how old is he? I don't even know. He's got to be in his 40s at least. He's definitely fucking rad. Yeah. And he's like the smiling face of Mount Baker. You know what I mean? I, I just, it gives me a good feeling to know that Baker always stayed Baker. Yeah. Like from the, from the uh, MBHC to the like Oi Boys, like Bass and those guys, like watching Jamie ride a Baker. It just, I've said it probably a thousand times on the microphone. We followed him down the canyon and the canyon's like side hit heaven if you're Jamie Lynn. You're Jamie Everybody Lynn, yeah. else, it's you got the fucking super hell. Stumps, yeah. <laughs> it's such hell. It's and seeing him actually boost off the side hits and finding landings where you're just going, I can't believe that's real. Like he's that much better than everybody. Yeah. And so yeah, I mean Baker, I had Gwyn on, maybe the first season or second season, and talking about she doesn't they. The how family doesn't you know buy into corporate sponsorships and shit like that. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's it's, dope. it's, it's, it's roots. Well, um, what's uh, Dan Donnelly's younger brother? Uh, oh, I don't even know. Daniel has a younger brother. Yeah, he had a younger brother. Um, God, I can't think of his name Just because it was so good. We we're we we're at. <laughs> I gotta think of his name. Ike. Ike, Ike Donnelly. Donnelly. Okay, so we're at Mount Baker, and it's just one of those like just. Coming down, and it's like, yeah. okay, when everyone's all rat packed up, and we're, uh, Dan Donnelly's younger brother Ike, like, in the in the lodge or whatever, he's like, I forgot my boots, and somebody just gave him a pair of boots, you know, just so he could ride. <laughs> you know, I guess that's pretty common up there to forget your boots and uh, sure. and your trash bag, but. <laughs> Like, we're going down, and it's like, you know, the baker, like, just steep shoot, like, just working our way down. And this, this guy's cartwheeling, and all of a sudden, the both, there's just a board of boots, with boots in it. Just goes by me, like, cartwheeling, and I finally, he's like, fuck, I lost my board. And he was just in socks, and I was like, he's like fuck, I, I wish I brought my boots. It was the fucking funniest day of snowboard I've ever seen. And those guys are just, they're just out having a good time. Yeah. They weren't trying to, like one up each other at all at all <laughs> but um yeah there's some there's some big boy riders up there and it's oh, pretty shit. incredible like tax dano yeah fulton craig craig <laughs> i mean yeah yeah one bass the, bass is, fuck okay so and one of the greatest baker things to happen is that i got to sit in the passenger seat with craig going up to baker in the morning and it's a full rally race like oh wow! The closest parking spot. No and, way. And every corner was drifted. As like I was just like quiet. I was like, I hope nobody's coming down. Yeah. But like he's passing cars and like they're all they all know each other and they're like practically hitting bumpers with each other. They're just fully Jesus. racing up there. And you get out of the car and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> fully gripped. Because <laughs> now I just have to make it through the day of riding around here. Stay alive. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Craig was such a character. Let's do some Craig talk, man. I, I anchored the show to Craig early on because I found it was uh, it was a really nice entry point with uh, with people for, for talking about like because he wasn't just the the competitor's competitor. He was also like fucking Elmer, right? Like he was also do, he was doing trick playing tricks on everybody. He was like crashing vehicles in in Japan. He was like. 
he was like a mischievous yeah. dude. Yeah, and in, very intelligent as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, his his daughter is whip smart as well. Yeah. Like, just super smart. So, like, yeah, do you have a favorite Craig story or a, a trip you went on with him? Or even, yeah, I got, yeah. I, got a, I got a couple. Yeah, cool, <laughs> cool. I, uh... So I I met Craig a few times at the contest, but I didn't really know him at all. And it wasn't until like I went to to Rick's to Sweden for the first time. It was like flying to Sweden, and then uh, Artie and I, I mean we took we took a we took a train from like Sweden all the way up there. It was like twenty hours or whatever. Oh wow! And so it was like um, the guy Beckett Colin, he was <laughs> like, okay, we got it. You know, it's in that film, and he's like, okay, we got a helicopter lined up. So when we get there, it was like we got there like. 8 30 or 9 and we're just gonna go in a helicopter and he's like he's like hey we have like one more seat open like and craig's up there doing his camp maybe you want to go ask him i was like fuck yeah i want to go ask him this is a great way to break bread with somebody so I, yeah. I knock on his door i go hey craig he's like, oh hey you're what are you up to and everything and i was like oh not, i just got here and i go but hey we have a helicopter with the extra seat you want to go and he's like when i go oh right now and he's like oh, okay <laughs> he's like i'll meet you in the lobby and i, I i'm not fucking lying like three and a half minutes, he comes down, just booted up, all ready to go, bored, just like, okay. And I was like, wait, I, I need a pack still. And he was just on it, and we jumped in that helicopter, and him and I, it was the, I mean, first of all, it's at like, we rode until like midnight, right? Oh, wow. And the sun was low, and the snow was golden. It was golden. It had the, the softest light. It was so, it was sparkling gold, and no exaggeration, and... That's the first time I really rode with Craig, and him and I are like riding, it's like doing turns, and it's just like, oh, he's really good. And I remember I come around, and he's right here, and I'm, and, and it was like, oh fuck, and I just, I fucking, I just ducked down, and he went boop, like kind of over me, <laughs> and I don't know if it was directly over me, but he just right, like popped right, over, right. and uh, we got to the bottom. I was like, fuck, that was a close one. He's like, yeah, I thought it was gonna kill you. I, like, I thought you were gonna kill me too, and. Uh, yeah, it was just that was a really cool trip. And then at the the end of the, the end of the night, just being out there and just like looking around. And he kept saying, he's like, "Yeah, this is like the uh, the Led Zeppelin song." And he kept and he's like, "The midnight land of the ice and the snow." And he was trying to remember the lyrics of the helicopter. And I was like, we "We're trying to remember the lyrics." And it was like, uh, it was a pretty magical, like one of the most magical snowboarding experiences. And and because he's such a good rider and riding with him, and it was like. I think we like we kind of connected, and I was like, "That's when I was like, oh, I want to film with Craig more. He's like fun to, he's fun to ride with, and he's fun to like." And was that? And he's really good. <laughs> was that soul lapse? Like, were you guys filming at all? Like, stop and go filming? Yeah, no. Or Ar was it... Artie was filming. Artie was filming. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but it was just the two of us, and so we just get out, and there was a little like kind of like crunchy ice section that we just kind of make it through, and then it was just open like, like show off powder <laughs> oh, i love it i love it that's amazing that's yeah. amazing so that that started a like a friendship with him that was you you filmed with him a couple of other times right? yeah and i i, I remember we we started filming more and i'd go i'd go i'd go up to canada <coughs> meet up with him and we'd drive around in his van that van was sick. Yeah, that van was. Oh my god! It was stinky too. <laughs> Socks, the long underwear, living out of the van, cruising around. It's like. But he'd be like, "Okay, like we're here," and I'm like, "We're here where?" <laughs> he never gave me the the details. I didn't ask questions. I just was yeah. like, "Oh yeah, Craig's in charge." Like I'm not gonna detail it out. It's like, okay, where we go, where we go, and we stop, and it's like, oh, we gotta talk to. It's like we're at some fucking farmhouse or whatever to talk to the guy, and um, and the guy would just like. Open his barn door and just like pull out a star. Oh, <laughs> out, of the, fuck. Out, of, out, of the, out of the barn! I was like, "Oh, we're going wow. like heli riding today." Oh my god! And uh, so he just had budget, like he had Burton budget, and he's yeah. And this is when he was just like he he had won the Mount Baker Bank slalom. He was like he left on that note, and <sighs> and he was just like riding riding bigger mountains, and um, and he was really like. I mean, he's solid, right? I mean, when I watch him too, like I was watching that stuff from, from Rick Scranson and it's just like the way he rides and he's just tucking in and he's all like just compact and yeah. he's just, he's, he's over his, his side cut and he's just like, he's on it. He's he, racing. he, he, there's two things there I want to tell you that I learned over the years. Number one, he was bow-legged as a kid. So oh, his yeah? mom had to bolt him 
to like a board with some straps, like like shoes, you know, like I never knew this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you know, belts with like the you know, so he's belted to this thing, and he would wander. He he was a kid, and he would like go like. You know, like how you have to go on a snowboard. He, he would like waddle around his, his house on that thing. Forrest and, Gump. And, and they were trying, exactly. And they were trying to get his knees together. So his knee together style was probably directly from that, first of all. Second of all, him and Tim Wendell went to, uh, Jose Fernandez had a camp somewhere. Oh, yeah. And they went there. And Tim and Craig both... We're like, this camp thing, we got to do this. So they did a black home camp. You probably went up to one of the, their first camps. Yeah, I was up there at one of them, yeah. But the fact that they had to dissect how to teach snowboarding actually got, made them technically the best snowboarders in the world at the time. Yeah. Yeah. The athleticism. I remember like, traveling in vans and like, oh, I was so stinky. And they just, like, <laughs> remember, like, and we both always have like really bad gas. And so we started like, it'd be like, and, and I would be like, star chatter. And he'd be like, okay. And then a few minutes go by and he'd be all, and he'd be all like, like rippling, rippling east wind. And like we named every single one of them. And it was fucking, it was brilliant. What a dude. <laughs> what a dude. There couldn't have been a better ambassador for snowboarding at that time. Yeah. Than that guy. He just had it. Yeah, I always wonder, you know, uh, like what it would be like now if he's still around. I think he would just be as strong as ever. And um, probably something like Jerry Lopez. Yeah. But I fucking get choked up when I go to Baldface, you know? Mm. And I, like, first time I was there, it was like, we go out to the, some people call it a cross, some people call it a sword. I'm going to call it a sword. Mm hmm going on the sword side yeah <laughs> and so the sword is like we get out there with gooch and you know it's like okay let's tell our best like craig stories and we get out here and i fucking walk up to the cross and i just fucking lose it no oh, man <laughs> i get so fucking like like right now i think about it i was like i fucking get choked up and i, I don't really like i don't know i think i said everybody deals with you know death and Everybody deals with different death differently. I like to just bottle it up and not really like kind of go with it. It's like, well, we have nobody lasts forever, and then I just like wait a year or two, and then I just fuck it all festers out. <laughs> Let it go. And um, what he left behind, you know, it's like if if he he would have been the first. Uh, uh, is it CMH or ACMG? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he would have been the it's first. It's not even an acronym. It's, it's, no. You, you think they'd have an acronym. <laughs> no. Something like slide or something. No. He was way ahead of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And he was so he was so right about free riding being the, the thing, right? He wanted the flow. He always wanted the flow, man. Yeah. I am really sorry for your loss with, with that. Like, <laughs> I mean, I can't even imagine. Yeah. It it's, shook the whole snowboard world. It was, ah. well, because he was he wasn't you know he was very he was always very safe and very like cautious and mm -hmm. but it was he was in an element that was in nobody's control. I was up at uh, in Juneau, Alaska, with Gooch, Craig, John Buffery, right? Oof. And it was like okay, it's been about like ten days. <laughs> it's still snowing out there. Yeah. And so finally it clears. Like okay, we're going up. So we I think we like. Flew up like past Mendenhall, like we were out there, and and Buff is just—it's like everything is just bling, <laughs> yeah, like white and blue, and it was so beautiful. And we're looking around, and you know, Craig stretching, and Gooch is like, "Fuck, I'm kind of hungover." <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was so good because you know Buff's digging the pit, and uh, and Craig's like, "Well, what do you think, Buffer?" And Buffer's like. Looks, looks at it, he's like, I think we should get the fuck out of here right now. Oh, wow. And he goes, see that helicopter down there? One at a time. And I was like, to Gooch, I was all, right behind you, Gooch. <laughs> and we just, we one at a time, just V-lined it down to the helicopter, got in, and it was like, <sighs> yeah. it was full relief that, because of course we're going to try, like, Buffer, he's like, he's one of the best. And like we're like, oh, okay. 
it's fucking unsafe. Yeah. And we're not going to like second guess it and be like, well, what if we, it was not even like, well, what if we did this aspect? It was like, okay. It's like quiet and just enjoy the scenery, get home safely. And that's, that's the kind of guy like Craig was. See, he I, wasn't like, yeah. fuck it, man. It's, it's going to be fine over here. He wasn't like, right, right. You know, he had, he had Intel. Yeah. I, <laughs> did, I, I don't have that. So I deliberately didn't get a sled for all those years because I can't put in all that effort and get all the way out there and then say, ah, oh, fuck it. It's too touchy. Like, I just don't have that constitution. I probably could now. It's hard because like, it's like, oh, I'm fuck it. I've been on aspects and they've slid. Like I've, I've, you know, when nobody can really go to resorts cause everything was closed and it was like, Oh, this is going to really like, people are going to die in the back country. Cause there's, everyone's like, Oh, I'm just going to like hike. Fuck yeah. And it's like, there's going to be a lot of people out of their element. And I was really worried that people were just going to go out and just get, you know, pummeled. But, um, I don't think it really, hit. maybe it did. I don't know if the numbers are up or not, but I was scared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, so I did eventually get a sled. And when I went out there, I mean, it, it was, they call it paved. Like it was just like, there were so many people out there that it was, it was nuts. Brandywine? Brandywine. Fucking so much fun. <laughs> Who have you gone up Brandywine with? Well, <laughs> I think the first time I went out there, I was with like Johan, the Destroyer. Oh. Who was out? Actually, I went on a trip. It was with Johan, Albin, Snowmobile, <laughs> our fearless other camera guy, yeah, Bill Gallon, and um, it was like Mickey, Johan. I don't know if Eker might have been out there, maybe, but we were out there in Pemberton, and Swede was the guide. Nice. And Johan and Swede was just like, oh, this. I don't know if this is good for the fucking the the, um, the region. <laughs> the area or the bars at night. It was like, these guys are like serious fucking Vikings. And oh, they got yeah. along pretty good. And, um, but I remember like being out in Sweden. It was like this thing, like kind of bottlenecked here. And it was just like open back up. And he's like, okay, one at a time. And I'm like the last guy. And he looks at me. He's like, fuck, this thing's going to slide. And he skied <laughs> off. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> He's fucking with me. Oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> Is he fucking with me? I don't know, but I'm going to play it safe. I was like, you can't even, it's not even in your control. I was like, fuck. But we, I think that same trip, we went, we ended up like sledding out to Brandywine. And I'm trying to think who, I think uh, maybe Alan. Maybe, maybe Al Clark? Take, yeah. Yeah, of course. Might have taken us out there. That sounds right. So I, I got to uh, revisit Brandywine, but this time it was for a Nike commercial and it was like Damn. a huge LA crew it was like so many people and lance accord um was shooting and directing and he's like incredible but like the way he got it set up every all the features had lights underneath it like colored lights oh jesus like they went out they went out like for a week before and got everything set up they scouted they put a lot of energy in <clears throat> into the whole project i don't know it was like a pretty big budget and so i was i was <laughs> filming with jake burton at the time and they called and they're like hey uh do you think you can come up to Canada? <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm actually driving back like home from Canada. And they're like, have you crossed the border yet? I go, no. He's like, okay. they're like, okay, we're sending work permits. Go to the border, take care of all your paperwork and get, get over to, uh, to Whistler. Shit. And it was the most amazing out there at night when it's all lit up. Pretty solid crew. Like you, you probably, or, uh. I'm trying to think about Aaron, huh? Or, uh. <laughs> I was I was more focused on Nico. like the, the 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 production detail side of it, sure, not, not, sure. you know, because I had to like I had to snowboard with a pretty big heavy film camera, um, but uh, you know we we had to like how it's like six miles out there, right? Sometimes, so yeah, we, it we, depends we on where you're had going. To sled everybody out there. Yeah. Everybody went out on sleds and they had yeah. cats, lights, crew, and it, the whole time at night it just snowed, <sighs> snowed. And it was awesome. It was cold, but um, I remember um, Lance Cord. He was like, he's like, man, like everybody's just so happy. It's snowing and it's cold. He's like, if we were in L.A., we'd probably get some fucking like humanity violation or like something would not be right. But it's like everybody out here is just into being out here in the snow and at night, and it's beautiful and nobody's complaining. He's like, it's a pretty awesome, awesome trip. I'm like, yeah, it's nobody's ever seen it like this before. That's so sick. So. Yeah, my kids doing film stuff, 
and I wasn't sure whether he would like it or not. I don't, I don't know. You know, around the house, you ask him to do stuff, and it's not like he's like no. And but he's on set, and they're like sweep this floor for eight hours straight. He's like just like smile on his face yeah, doing it. That's right? how it starts. So you show up on time and you get the yeah. shit done, and, and then you're they call you back, and that's how it works. He said it's that, that there, simple. Yeah, he said there was an L.A. crew, and he's like. It was so stereotypical. He loved it. Like the girl going like, this coffee is cold. Who the fuck brought me cold coffee? <laughs> All right, darling. I need you to just smile a little. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, now a little more like this. Okay, why is this guy talking to me? Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> he said it was so much fun to just see it in real life. Yeah, it's, 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 they're like those, that's why I, like, I kind of got into like, I wanted to like, kind of do the more like, commercial cinematography and it was good but it's like it's a there's a chain of command and there's an etiquette to it and it's fine i mean you work with these great um dps and directors and it's like you kind of just suck it up and you just sit in the background and you watch and it's like oh, that's a, oh that's how you do it <laughs> sick sick yeah so it was it, all that was great experience but then it's eventually like you know i'm trying to it took me like probably like it took me a while to get out of the whole snowboard industry and kind of into, into the commercial cinematography. And then once I was in it as just a camera operator, yeah, I felt like it's, there's no, there's no room for creativity unless you're the director of photography or you're the director. So I need to just direct my own. <laughs> my yeah. Own. Well, you've got a red camera, right? I've got a red and yeah, I got a bunch of old film cameras and stuff, but yeah. yeah. Like, so those red cameras, my buddy gave me a bit of a lowdown on him. It's the Oakley guy went like nuts and like basically back ended the like back toward the fucking like the Hollywood production scene, right? With the camera. They, I that mean, you could... they, it was a little rough in the beginning, but they yeah. just kept putting a lot of like energy and money and technology into it, and then they and then they eventually start like it's it's all about the sensor, yeah. You know, and the, they eventually. I mean, their sensors are okay, but like, you know, they have like oh, we're like. 6k like 8k and it's like you know aries like airflex is like they're like it's it's the quality of the of the pixel not the amount <laughs> that okay. was their thing they're like yeah. yeah you do your thing and they're two different like styles of of cameras and people who shoot them but finally i mean they've really they've come a long ways with the, with the newer sensors now and like we're, we're big dps are like okay <laughs> this is working but if you if you watch I'll give you this example. If you watch an, an episode of Deadwood, okay, okay, you watch an episode of Deadwood, and that, that's all shot in in film, thirty five millimeter. Yeah, and you watch it, and you see the blacks, how the blacks fall off, and with the video, I hate using the word video, <laughs> with the digital, <laughs> yeah, with the digital image, the blacks don't really fall off. They okay, just, it, you kind of see more. And okay, that's, and that's the difference. in in the beginning, it was like you see everything, and it was everything was too crisp and it just needed to be toned down, so they need to kind of. I don't know how. I have no idea what what's in a sensor. <laughs> you're, you're right. <laughs> no, I don't have no idea how, like the technology that goes into it. I'm sure um, there's a lot of people that can break it down, but I just want to be able to go <laughs> with the camera. Yeah. But I think like now, like what I really want to do is I just want to focus on like like filming like 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 light imagery. Okay. Not like lightweight, <laughs> but light. And so uh, there's so many ways to make different lights and colors. And I know it sounds a little psychedelic and, and such, but it's more of like, this is why I have this whole shop here. It's because I'm going to be able to build instruments that, that, that like warp light and, and, and to be able to document it on film. So the whole, the, what the real finished product is, is the tool and all the energy that goes into making this tool to be able to like bend light like that, dude. And the other, the other, the actual documenting it and, and putting it on the on <clears throat> on film or video is that's the easy part. Yeah. The hard part is like making <laughs> things that spin and wobble and like like project. So that that's that's my whole new like um, I that's what I want to really just dedicate my the rest of my life into. Sick. And I don't know if that's going to be for five years or fifty years. So. <laughs> The, I'm shooting for 50. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where did the love of psychedelia come from? Psychedelics and journeying and that, and that kind of stuff? Because it, it, it's definitely been a part of your life, right? It's been a huge part of my life. 
Whew. Yeah, that's a that's a. Yeah, I guess we can talk about. It. I mean, I I'm I'm a little bit like hesitant to talk about it because I have kids and I don't want to get uh, into the, to the, yeah. the whole like yeah well, yeah I can cut that tripping, yeah you know? yeah yeah. You know, obviously, it just it opens up parts of your mind that just don't get used, and I think it's just like it all of a sudden instead of like this, you're 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 more like this, and so you're you're just taking in more, and I think it's just like it's funny because I have I always. But I meet people and I just, it just click with them, you know, and after talking to them, it's like, oh, really? You tried some of those mushrooms? And it's like, oh, yeah. And it's like, oh. It's like, it's like, boop. Yeah, it's a mindset. Connected. It's definitely a mindset for sure. Yeah. It's, it's something for me personally that um, I read like the doors of perception or something. I was kind of nerdy in my, like, I, I, I remember asking, <laughs> you know, the guy in my math class, you've done <laughs> drugs, right? Tell me about these <laughs> drugs and drugs. what they do to your mind. And well, I loved it. I just like instantly fell in love. I was like, oh, that's like you said, the expanding and just having a different worldview. It felt like it felt like traveling the world or something, traveling the universe. Yeah. And I, th I think, you know, there's a big there's a big movement with mushrooms right now and mm -hmm. um, that they're they're the healing powers in them for yeah. partners. It's the same thing with like, with with cannabis. You know, it's like it was always recreational, and, but now it's like the, the the medical side of it, depending upon which dispensary you go to. Because <laughs> yeah. there's the THC version, which is pretty heavy, and then yeah. but just the whole the whole like um, the healing portion of it, and it's like there's there's results. <clears throat> and I know it's like you know like always word is like well. And I'm I'm not I don't even I'm not even good at smoking weed. I don't even, like I'll smoke it once in a while, but I don't. Yeah. I, get, I just yeah. get too like uh, I, I, I can't do it. But I see, um, you know, it's always it it works and it's effective. But I always worry about like okay, the big like to the FDA is going to get FDA approved instead of just growing it out of the dirt <laughs> with no chemicals and uh. and bunching it up and then here you go, this is the medicine. We have to like process it, put chemicals into it, totally. extract the THC and all fuck this shit. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, just let people fucking do what they want to do. And I, I understand like, I understand like, you know, cocaine and heroin, like that's some pretty heavy drugs that just fucking destroy people. And like with the, with the weed and mushrooms, or like the, those type of, I don't even want to call them drugs, but those type of plants. Yeah. I think those type of plants are like, they're healers, but I think, you know, it has such a, uh, it's all tainted from like, oh, it's, that's, this is your brain on drugs. Right, right. Well, there's also like, there's science coming out now that they've been able to do human studies. They haven't been able to do that because they've been on schedule one drugs for so long. They don't have the right research behind them. They kind of made it recreational before they even did the research. They just said, okay, anecdotally, we know what this does. Yeah. But I think, um, there's a lot of research saying that kids shouldn't have them. You know what I mean? Shouldn't yeah, be. That's, that's when you're 15, 16 years old, when we were young and we were experimenting, you know, there was, uh, for me, there was such a stigma. I also felt really bad. I'd like smoke weed or whatever and then wake up in the morning and be like, ah, oh, fuck, we're, we're drug addicts or we're, <laughs> we're, we're on drugs. Like, we're I was so, on drugs yeah, last night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were on drugs, dude. <laughs> Or like we're we're criminals too. That was the other thing. Was that like if anyone finds out we were on drugs, yeah, it, we could go to juvie or whatever the yeah, fuck it was. But it was all plant based. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's the funny part. I didn't but even I, know, man. Like I had no idea. I had acid the first time I had any drug because I was like, I'm not trying one of those smoky drugs. Yeah, those things are harsh. I bet. Yeah, or like like cocaine. It's like I see what that shit did to people in Tahoe, and I was like, I'm yeah, not fucking going near not that. Not fucking shit. with that. Yeah, that wasn't my thing ever. I'm not going near that shit, Tom Mulder. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Mulder. Yeah, but still, it's like that shit just. I don't. I don't. I don't see the point. It's just people. Just you watch people, and they're just like they just yeah. talk in circles. And they're Ten like, coffees. They're, they're like, okay, I got yeah. an idea. I got an idea. That's what it, if the idea, and that's all it goes. What if? Yeah. What if? Yeah. What if you weren't on fucking <laughs> pinned right now? You'd be able to get it done. You fucking idiot. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've I fucking have had a absolutely wonderful time out at your place. This has been 
It, thank you for being such a rad host and yeah. just being like, yeah, I got, I got a spot. I got a spot. You got the best spot. <laughs> this fucking shit is awesome out I'm, here. I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be in life. I feel like. Where, sure. where are you in the snowboard industry? Do people still call you and say like, Sione, we need a shot for this thing, or we, no. or we come on this trip? Or <laughs> no, the only people that really call and 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 that are into it are are my trusty old friends at Volcom. And they they have always you know Richard I met Richard Wolcott when he was in Tucker Hall when they were making stickers and <laughs> yeah, now that duh. Ryan Immigart I mean they're still like they're like do you need anything I'm like well I got I got a pair of pants last year I'm okay <laughs> I'm like well do you, do you need another pair of pants or a jacket I'm like no I got this I can use a new jacket and the other one has holes in it but I I just I don't really try to like like look the part but those guys have been I did a little thing with them. Um, Spritzerland, yeah, and that was just a. You go up to, you go up to Nelson, up to Baldface, and it's Ooh. it's fucking cosmic up there. It's so incredible, just being out there, and just riding with all your buddies, and it's like there's no rules, and it's like, Jamie Lynn is there and the oh. cat with you, and you just always, I was like fuck, he's like the general, and I always like when he's up there, it's like he just, he just, <laughs> out of nowhere he just pulls out an old pipe, and he's just like I'm like. Is that like pipe smoke, you know, like the old fucking <laughs> yeah. pipe tobacco. And I was like, and I turn around and, and, he, and uh, James is like, I like calling him James. James is like smoking the pipe. I'm like, where, where did that come from? I'm like, you just fucking pull shit out. He pulls out a fucking big knife and cuts shit off. And I'm just like, God, you are so fucking unique. And he's such a sweetheart. He's so like, he's just such a solid person. And um, that just, but to get back to like with Volcom, you know, like they let me just do whatever I want to do. And that's what I like to do. <laughs> and that's not a, uh, that doesn't happen a lot. So I'm just going to do what I love doing and let them find me. You know, I'm not going to try to like, I, I'm just doing it for me now. I need to figure out a way to like keep that rolling with, you know, financially, but <laughs> my overhead is low. Yeah. So I'm able to, to just kind of float with, with nothing. So it's, it's fine. I just, I'd rather be, make less money and be inspired and make shit and do it. I don't need like a boat. Right. What about <laughs> making boards and stuff? I mean, you've got the, you've got every thing here to do it. To make a snowboard? Basically. There are people that make such good snowboards these That's days true. that do that it so true. well and that it's is so true. nice mm -hmm. that... It's just stress free. There's so many other things I want to make. It's a lot of work, snowboard. and there's a lot of you got to have a bunch of you know. Yeah, I don't. I don't inks and shit. Yeah, I'm not. I have like right right now. I I ride an academy like a Chris Roach Master Series, and Sick. that is by far the best board I've ever ridden. And I'm like, how could it get any better? Like, yeah, with snowboard technology, the first real improvement was like when the Malalo came out. I was like, because Terry was like. He's like, dude, you got to try the Malolo. And I was like, is that good Terry impression? That was pretty good. I fucking love that guy. <laughs> and um, it really was like, oh, it, 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 with the skinnier tail, like it still floats, but it still turns really well. And it was like, oh, this is like, this is a new way of snowboarding. I know it, and it's gone way past that. But that board I have is like a traditional camber, but the thing floats in powder and it turns like, it's amazing. It just, it just goes. And that, that's, that's, that's what I'm into, and my teaching my kids like carving turns. It's like, that's like dope. nobody's fucking don't race down the hill. Just like nobody that doesn't it doesn't matter. It's all about you just got to fucking turn, turn, have fun. Like the the idea here is we're milking the mountain for everything. Yeah, when you we're lock hitting, into a rail yeah. and you hold it and you, you just feel it and it's going <laughs> across so and rad. it's still turning. It's yeah. like that's the most yeah. amazing feeling. I keep so. forgetting Jacoby was in your group as well. The Joker. Yeah, he was on his own. He wasn't really riding with us in a pot. He was a little bit, but yeah, he was more like focused, like like taking notes, like how can I beat them at the next contest? <laughs> <laughs> that dude, just just a gem, unbelievable. Yeah, unreal. You know, like with with uh, at Donner Ski Ranch, um, Jerry Masterpole, he used to teach cross him. He used to teach UNR, like he was a ski coach, and then when he switched to the deal with Burton. Then all of a sudden it was like all the Burton guys were at Donner, and oh, it's like nice. I'm gonna, I go, I asked Jerry, I'm like, hey, can I can I like train with you guys? Because I really just wanted to be able to make a snowboard turn. Like yeah. I, want, I didn't want yeah. to slide turns. I wanted to, yeah. I wanted to become like a fast like 
turn and that's that's all I wanted to do. I don't have racing in my blood. I'd go to races. I was in speed suit and I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? This is fucking dumb. I hope my friends don't see me. <laughs> but I do. I I did it just because you know that's what we trained for, like GS. And there was there was one day. He was like, we we're up on the lift and he's like, Joni, you're uh, you're riding pretty good today. What's up? And I go, well, to be honest with you. I just got, I was in Reno all night and I drank all night. I just drove here. I slept for about five minutes in the car. I got dressed and, and that was about like uh, 40 minutes ago. And he looked at me and he laughed and he's like, he's like, you should do that more often. And I was like, yes, coach. You are a real snowboard coach. You're that, legit. That's epic. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, thank you. I can't believe how fun this has been. Yeah, and good. It, it this was, is just the start of your trip. This is just the start. Yeah. Yeah. This, I, I'm in the best place. I, I, can't, I can't believe how many, uh, you know, and it snowed last night or all day today, it looks like. Yeah. Probably snowed a foot. I'm going to Bear Valley Saturday. Yeah, that'll be fun. Maybe I'll come meet up with you guys. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going. I'm staying. Uh, anyways, I'm staying in Tahoe and I've, yeah. I've got the car so I can drive wherever. Yeah. It's a lo- you, you can't really drive across, though. You have to drive back down. and then Oh, and you then, have to go down. Yeah, you got to make around. a big U. <laughs> so w- if you go up by Grass Valley that way, then you get to Truckee. Yeah. But yeah, Bear well, Valley's up the next valley up? Uh, a couple valleys over. <laughs> a couple valleys over. <laughs> yeah. But it's, um. yeah, Tahoe is like straight up, straight up 80. But like yeah. Tahoe this weekend will be good because there's, there's good snow and there's... there's People haven't started their Christmas vacation yet. That's so. why I come down at this time because it's just like people are thinking about getting gifts and f- freaking out. And they, oh, is there snow yet? I don't know. People don't like to go in the early season. Yeah, you should check I it out. Like, that. Sugar Bowl is really nice. Yeah. Even like Donner Ski Ranch. If you go with like, because I'm like, I go there and I know where to go and everybody's yes. just on the trails and it's families. I'm parked like right in front of the chairlift. <laughs> and, and it's just like, they're not long powder runs, but it's right. still soft snow that nobody's touched and nobody knows where it's at. Sugar Bowl's really nice. Sugar Bowl's really nice. They've got a lot of terrain. Yeah. Yeah, I had I, I had a day up there. And I, just, you know how it is when you're just riding by yourself, you're kind of like looking around. If, I'm you, like, if you can go there and if you can if you can ride with Roach, he he yeah. knows Sugar Bowl really well. Yeah, I think we're gonna do either a boreal day or, I mean, Tina and Mikey are going up Sugar Bowl tomorrow. Oh, they are. Yeah, I think so. So I might try and get up there and just wander around, see if I can bump into him. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be worth it. Oh man, you're the best. Thanks for everything, dude. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks for setting up this. This shop is sick. Oh, it was already like this. Yeah, I mean, thanks for setting <laughs> up the lights. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Thanks, dude. Oh, that was killer. We just did two hours. Oh, really? F and Rad. Shout outs this week to Dave and his family for having me at their home. Shout out to Dave Prizman and his girl Dawn and their friend Luca. Super fun to ride with you guys this week. Be sure to come back next week for more F and Rad snowboarding presented by Vans and brought to you by SIA Productions.